Today we discuss acquisition of English as foreign language. When the British started ruling India, they searched for Indian mediators who could help them to administer India. The British turned to high caste Indians to work for them. Many high caste Indians, especially the Brahmins, worked for them. Their policy was to create an Indian class who should think like the British or as it was said on them in Britain, Indians in blood and color but English in taste, in opinions and morals and intellect. The British also established in, in India universities uh, based on British models with emphasis on English education. These Indians also got their education in British universities. Lord Macaulay introduced English education in India. Now let us watch a video about the rising of English language in India. The English language has changed the face of the world. With over one third of the world population conversing in English, it has grown from a regional language to a truly global one. The introduction of English to the Indian subcontinent is often thought of as having been forced by the British after Lord Macaulay's report on education in 1835. However, this is not entirely the case. Christian missionaries that were setting a pace in the 1600s were the first to introduce English to the subcontinent. The year 1813 saw the passing of the Charter Act that was followed by a flood of British missionaries which brought with them English education and ideas. By the beginning of the 19th century, a part of the Indian population had already developed a liking towards the language. Missionaries and social reformers such as Raja Ram Mohan Roy were of the opinion that English provided Indians with the key to all knowledge, all the really useful knowledge which the world contains. However, in the early 1800s, the British government decided to invest in furthering traditional education such as that of Sanskrit and Persian. Enlightened reformers like Raja Ram Mohan Roy protested vehemently and petitions were filed demanding the imparting of the best and most modern European education through English. Sanskrit and Persian, which were the chief subjects of study, were felt to be entirely inadequate. Brother Ramon Rai himself founded a number of schools to teach Bengali youth through the medium of English. By the time of Macaulay, the demand for the introduction of English as the medium of instruction and for the modernization of education was widespread. In the following years, English was firmly established as the medium of infrastructure and administration by the British Raj. It was seen as the language of opportunity and became accepted as the language of the elite, of administration and of the pan-Indian press. But English faced a strong opposition. Gandhiji, educated in English himself, said, the process of displacing the vernacular has been one of the saddest chapters in the British connection. Ram Mohan Roy would have been a greater reformer and Lok Tilak would have been a greater scholar if they had not to start with the handicap of having to think in English and transmit their thoughts chiefly in English. India, however, continued down the path with Jawaharlal Nehru delivering the independence address to the whole nation in English. Long years ago, we made a tryst with destiny and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge, not only or in full measure, but very substantially. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. After independence, much effort was made by the nationalists to make Hindi the national language. But riots opposing the move erupted across the country. The government was left with no choice than to accept the imperialistic, yet convenient and neutral language available at the time, English. The debate about Hindi as a national language continues until this day and the population remains steadfast in its opinion. Is Hindi acceptable to all Indians as the national language? What are you telling us at the start of the show? In fact, 54%, yes, 46% though there are saying no, Hindi is not acceptable as a national language. But today, 
English is not just a link language, but the language for social mobility. It is a vehicle of progress, regardless of caste, sex, or color. English language was seen as a language of the imperialists, but today with globalization, with outsourcing, English has become a language of aspiration, and this has made something that everybody wants to learn, and the fact that we have English is now becoming a huge strategic asset. On the flip side, it has caused deep-seated changes in Indian culture and society, where people attempt to speak the language in order to maintain interpersonal relationships. Is that Rishi, no? Ma, no to kya to ya? Re, you are being my son by knocking. Kya chahiye, ma? Meet karne aayi thi. So much time not seeing you. Ma, please English pe baat mat karo. Aapko nahi aati. Whether this is progress or not, only time will tell. The English Christian missionaries came to India in 1813 and they also built schools at primary level for Indians in which the language of instruction was local language. Later on the missionaries uh, built high school with English as a, the language of instruction which obliged the Indians who wanted to study to have a good knowledge of English. The British rulers began building their universities in India from 1857. English became the first language in, 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 in Indian education. The modern leaders of that era in India also supported the English language and claimed it to be the main key towards success. Indians who knew good English were seen as the new ally of India. Many new schools were established in, in which the language of instruction was English. According to the British laws, the language of instruction at a university level was English and therefore schools that emphasized English as the medium of instruction. Even after India's independence, English remained the main language of India. Officially, it was given a status of an assistant language and was supposed to terminate officially after 15 years of India's independence, but still remains the important language of India. CMS College Kottayam is also the first college in India. It was founded by the Church Missionary Society of England in 1817 when no institution existed in what was the what was then the princely state of Travancore teach English. The first college in the princely state of Travancore however was Scott Christian College Nagarkoil. It is estimated that Over 1 billion people are currently learning English worldwide. But today, we can speak fluently in English as we use our mother tongue. Of course, no. There are many hurdles to overcome these difficulties. Okay friends, today we deal with the topic language acquisitions and problem with acquisition of language. Language acquisition refers to the regular progress of the skill in a language by using it naturally in communicative situations. Acquisition is a natural process. Children acquire language through non-conscious process during which they, they, were, they are unaware of the grammatical rules. This is similar to the way they acquire their mother tongue. English is the second language to us. It refers to any language learned in, in addition to a person's first language. Second language acquisition refers to what learners do. It does not refer to practices in language teaching, although teaching can af affect acquisition. The term acquisition was originally used to emphasize the non-conscious nature of the learning process. But in recent years, learning and acquisition have become largely synonyms. Now let us listen about language acquisition. Language acquisition is the process by which humans acquire the capacity to perceive and comprehend language, as well as to produce and use words and sentences to communicate. Language acquisition is one of the quintessential human traits, because non-humans do not communicate by using language. Language acquisition usually refers to first language acquisition, which studies infants' acquisition of their native language. This is distinguished from second language acquisition, which deals with the acquisition in both children and adults of additional languages. The capacity to successfully use language requires one to acquire a range of tools including phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, 
and an extensive vocabulary. Language can be vocalized as in speech, or manual as in sign. The human language capacity is represented in the brain. Even though the human language capacity is finite, one can say and understand an infinite number of sentences, which is based on a syntactic principle called recursion. Evidence suggests that every individual has three recursive mechanisms that allow sentences to go indeterminately. These three mechanisms are relativization, complementation and coordination. Furthermore, there are actually two main guiding principles in first language acquisition, that is, speech perception always precedes speech production and the gradually evolving system by which a child learns a language is built up one step at a time, beginning with the distinction between individual phonemes. The capacity to acquire the ability to incorporate the pronunciation of new words depends upon many factors. Before anything the learner needs to be able to hear what they are attempting to pronounce. Another is the capacity to engage in speech repetition. Children with reduced abilities to repeat nonwords, a marker of speech repetition abilities, show a slower rate of vocabulary expansion than children for whom this is easy. It has been proposed that the elementary units of speech have been selected to enhance the ease with which sound and visual input can be mapped into motor vocalization. Several computational models of vocabulary acquisition have been proposed so far. Various studies have shown that the size of a child's vocabulary by the age of 24 months correlates with the child's future development and language skills. A lack of language richness by this age has detrimental and long-term effects on the child's cognitive development, which is why it is so important for parents to engage their infants in language. If a child knows 50 words or less by the age of 24 months, he or she is classified as a late talker and future language development, like vocabulary expansion and the organization of grammar, is likely to be slower and stunted. Two more crucial elements of vocabulary acquisition are word segmentation and statistical learning described above. Word segmentation or the segmentation of words and syllables from fluent speech can be accomplished by 8-month-old infants. By the time infants are 17 months old, they are able to link meaning to segmented words. Recent evidence also suggests that motor skills and experiences may influence vocabulary acquisition during infancy. Specifically, Learning to sit independently between 3 and 5 months has been found to predict receptive vocabulary at both 10 and 14 months of age, and independent walking skills have been found to correlate with language skills around 10 to 14 months of age. These findings show that language acquisition is an embodied process that is influenced by a child's overall motor abilities and development. Here we can see 9 factors that influence language learning for kids. Motivation is the first one. Is the child being forced to learn or do they want to learn the language? When a child understands the importance of understanding a language and can see how it directly applies to their life, they learn faster. We have found that a contextual theme based curriculum can help get students more excited to dive into language learning. When they are interested in learning a language and they see meaningful connection to their lives. They begin to take risk to produce language which hel helps them to acquire it faster. Support at home is the another factor. Parents should support their children to learn English. Then third one is prior linguistic knowledge. Is the language they are learning their first foreign language? Once a child has studied and acquired a language, their skill at learning another will increase. Language learners have the ability to translate skills from one language to another because they are able to recognize the rules and patterns of the language even if the vocabulary is different. Next factor is learning environment. How does the child feel in the classroom? Another key factor is how comfortable students feel in their language learning environment. Does their classroom feel cold and tense? or positive uh, and relaxing? What is the school's culture and beliefs about language learning? We have found that 
students learning environment has an impact on their motivation a low anxiety language learning environment increases the chance of chance for acquisition then teaching strategies how is the how is the language taught the strategies of a language teacher uses have a big impact on language learning how does the teacher help students understand the concepts of language how does the teacher take different learning styles into account as well as the different levels of comprehension for example watching a film in the ta target language and writing and performing skits in the target language reach multiple learning styles offering an immersion experience helps students to connect the language learning to their everyday lives but rote vocabulary memorization and grammar drills create meaningless language lessons comprehensible output is the comprehensible input is the another factor linguistic stephen krashen is known for developing the input hypothesis of second language acquisition in this context the titular input is the language curriculum krashen wrote that teaching at just any level of difficulty is not sufficient the input received by a student must be comprehensible in other words the curriculum must reach a child at their current level and challenge them with activities and just first level beyond their current stage if the material feels out of reach the student can feel shut down and have trouble engaging with the lesson to make sure that students feel motivated to learn it's important to ensure that they feel like they have the ability to progress to the next level of learning next point is students personality is another factor is the student introvert or extrovert a student's personality can affect how they learn a second language more introverted students have been shown to take no longer to acquire a language because they are more hesitant to make mistakes extrovert students on the other hand are more likely to go out on a limb and try out their newly learned vocabulary to ensure that both personality types succeed it is important to create an environment where students understand that mistakes are part of the learning process and it's more important to speak than than to be perfect age is another factor how old is a student when they start learning a foreign language while students of all ages can learn a foreign language there is a con consensus that certain aspects are affected by the age of the learner it becomes harder for students to have native pronunciation from the teen years some students also find that it is more difficult to fully acquire a foreign language as they get older but this is not true of everyone comfort in their country or country of residence is another factor how happy are students in the country where they are studying a language a final factor in language learning is the child's comfort in the current country of residence most children move to a new country because of their parents job not by choice as a result their motivation to learn a new language can depend whether they are happy to be in a new place or if they have come kicking and screaming luckily even if a child is unhappy at first their attitude can shift if they feel welcomed by their teachers and supported by their parents language learning is not a skill that children either have or have not there there actually are many internal and external factors that influence how fast children pick up a new language from child's personality to the way language is taught at their school in this episode we discuss two topics um, beginning of english language and acquisition of english language when we reach into the conclusion we can understand that british rulers began building their universities in india from 1857 lord macaulay introduced english education in india english became the first language in india education from that time acquisition is a natural process children acquire language through non conscious process during which they are unaware of the grammatical rules this is similar to the way they acquire their first language there are many factors that influence language learning for kids like motivation support at home prior linguistic knowledge etc